on this computer. All right, there we go. All right. Um, so who was John? John was the beloved disciple. Um, the setting. So I'll go through just a little bit of background so we have a context. Um, so it was the setting was a small community of Christians in ancient Ephesus in the late first century. Y'all here? Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. We can change up. All right. So it was written yeah, in Ephesus. Uh, written by John, who was an evangelist, an apostle. So Ephesus, which is Turkey um, today, Asia Minor, Turkey. And what was the point? It was the point was as Christians of Ephesus were told about believing in Jesus, there had become some controversy about who Jesus was. Some of the rabbis were asking, was Jesus truly the son of God? Was he the Messiah? Can Christians, that is people who converted to Christianity, not just physical children of Abraham, be children of Abraham? Could anyone prove Jesus's claim uh, that he was from God as true? And tensions grew as well as more Jews converted, small churches grew alongside the converts, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, the synagogue, and began to convert people. So what had happened is that these were a group of Jews, and they, they began to... Uh, have other people, Gentiles, come and begin to get converted. And so they began to get controversies and stuff like that. So, and then, of course, false teachers. So that is why John wrote this. So, real quick, the authorship and date of the book of John. As with the other Gospels, there is no illicit evidence uh, as to who was the uh, the author. So he doesn't name it. It's anonymous. But there are two ideas. Is that it was written by John, the apostle. Uh, well, there's three ideas. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, uh, there's John, the apostle, wrote the book. Um, the second idea is that John had a disciple named John who wrote the book. Mm. And then if you get over into the weeds, that somebody else wrote the book and they just made it up. <laughs> oh, okay. So I don't I don't reject I I, I reject the third one <laughs> that it was made uh -huh. up. Um and like I said, this gospel was written around the year of nine uh the year of 90 so john was very old when he when he was writing this he was a, a very old and then of course right after this he wrote revelation and then after that he died um but he was like <laughs> who died on his own he he didn't he didn't get uh he didn't go and get killed he actually died um, and so then they said there's clues, obviously. There's clues, obviously, in the book about who wrote it. So John 13, 23, 19, 26, and 27, 22, 1 and 10, 21, 7, and 21, 20 through 24 give us internal evidence of who wrote John. Okay. Uh, Eusebius said that John, the son of Zebedee, wrote it and Eusebius wrote this in the year 125. So that uh Eusebius also uh was the one who, who gave evidence that Matthew wrote Matthew and Luke wrote Luke. And it's very interesting because that was 125. So that was just 30 was it 35 years after this was after uh you know, after it was written. So, you know, the Bible, like a lot of people, a lot of our uh, 
evangelical friends, you know, um, think that the Bible just fell out of the sky and fell out of English. There is a long pattern and there is a a uh, a line of information all the way up from that time. Um, so that's a little information. So again, recipients was Jewish believers. And also it says here that these were Jewish believers who were in between Jewish and Gentile cultures. Because remember, this was definitively after the Jews had been dispersed out of Israel. Um, the temple had been burned down a few decades ago, had been destroyed. So it is just, you know, amen. Okay. I'm sorry, you said something? Still, chaotic. Still chaotic? Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, that's, that's what they're saying. It was chaotic because you had the Jews, you had the Gentiles. No and then, of course, the Jews were, uh, again, they were in a space especially during this time um, where they were still, because you know you had the the, the, the Holy Spirit that fell upon the, um, you know, the Gentiles in Acts 10, but then you also have to realize that that was something that happened in one area and had not kind of disseminated throughout the entire, Correct. you know, Christian world. Correct. All right. So real quick, there's a few um, themes. Um, the themes. So one of the themes is revelation and redemption. Mm -hmm. Worship and the spirit. So worshiping God. Jesus Christ, the character of Jesus Christ, that he was the I am and that he had deity. So Christ was the incarnation of God. The work of the Holy Spirit, the mission of the church, and a little bit of end times. So let me read that one more time so you can okay. get a little a, 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 a grasp of it. So revelation and redemption, the revelation of the redemption of Jesus Christ, worship and the spirit. Remember what does John said? We worship what? In spirit and in truth. Jesus Christ and the deity of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit, the mission of the church. So, of course, you can't you can't have the church without the Holy Spirit. Uh, and a little bit of end times. End times. All right. Does anybody want to read? Sure. Yeah, I like it. <clears throat> um. Do you want it read in any particular translation? I'm reading it out of the New Living Translation, but whatever version you want to read. Okay. I'm using the Passion Translation. All right, let me pull that up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just totally forgot. Can you use any version except for the Passion Translation? Because it's hard. Wait, wait. Is that online? Because I couldn't find it online. I have no idea. It's not, yeah, it's not about Bible Gateway. It's not a yeah, it's not about Bible Gateway. You might try Bible Hub. Bible what? Hub. Hub Bible Hub. H U B. I think U version has Oh, okay. Uh I'll use the uh, new century. Okay. Oh. All right. Yeah. That's a little better. <laughs> okay. What did you say? M land. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like okay. Like a recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to laugh again. That's okay. That's all right. All right. <clears throat> okay. Like Tabby right. Campbell, I'm ready. All right. The uh, St. John, chapter one, starting at verse one. In the beginning, there was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. God, uh, he was with God.
God in the beginning. All things were made by him, and nothing was made without him. In him there was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness was not over and the darkness has not overpowered it. There was a man named John who was sent by God. God came, he came to tell people the truth about the light so that through him all people could hear about the light and believe. John was not the light, but he came to tell people the truth about the light. The true, the true light that gives light to all was coming into the world. The world was the word was in the world, and the world has was the world was made by him, but the world did not know him. He came to the world that was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him and believe in him, he gave the right to become children of God. They did not become his children in any human way, by any human parents or human desire. They were born of God. The word became a human and lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only son of the father. And he was full of grace and truth. John tells the truth about him and cries out saying, this is the one I told you about. The one who comes after me is greater than I am because he was living before me. Because he was full of grace and truth. From him, we all received one gift after another. After another. The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the only son, is very close to the Father, and he has shown us what the Father is like. Okay, we can stop there. Thank you. Okay, um, you're welcome, <laughs> And was, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say that you know a lot of times you can find that in believers that they think that this is this a new believer should read John. I have no idea why yeah. because this is the <laughs> most confusing book as ever. It should not. That should not be the book that a new believer reads first at all. Fifteen verses of having so confused. Yes. Oh, they don't know what to do. Well, one one reason I think that they say that is because it, it's the love book. It, it it um one of the things I, I think, and this is what I will think from the other books tell us how to live like Christ. Um and this book is different. Um, it, it tells us, <laughs> because I'm, I'm starting to look at it differently now, it, it tells us um, who Jesus is and tells us what Jesus gives us and who Jesus is. Now, for a lot of, a lot of, of our backgrounds, a lot of our evangelical backgrounds, for them, it's, you know, it's in tangent. We follow what Jesus said, and we believe who Jesus is. Um, now, if you go to the other side, to the exact opposite side, like I was reading and I was I was looking at Matthew. Uh, Matthew, if you go to the, because you got one extreme, you got the super conservatives, and then you got the super liberals. So then the super liberals are that the Bible that, that the super liberals basically put out that you start with Matthew because Matthew tells us who Jesus was. Now I even heard people say that Jesus, like some some very progressive super liberals will say um, that 
Jesus didn't come that we worship him, but he comes that we follow his teachings. So I think that it's important because I think, number one, I think most of us fall in the middle of these beliefs, but then I think you have to fall in the middle of those beliefs because if you talk about what we talk about rightly dividing the word of God is that you got to look at both of these, is that both of those books are in there. So you got the synoptic gospels that are dealing with the story of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus and and that the 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 story and the miracles that is of Jesus was important but then you get to John which was not a synoptic gospel so synoptic means same view it was different and what it was was that this was the love book that shows you um what Jesus is and how how we supposed to love Jesus and so I think that we have to balance the both. But then what it also says, I can see where Pastor Terry says that, is that this is thick. John 1, this is like theology, the teaching of, 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 of Christianity. This first section here is thick. Can you close the door for me real quick? Because this is a little loud. Really? Can you close the door for me? Sorry, the washing machine's on. Um, but it's thick. I mean, and let's just, let's just go through this section of what all of the things that are being said right here. Um, so first it says, in the beginning was the word. So the word there is logos or logos, logos. Um, that's that's what the, when it says the word. And the word uh, logos, it could be translated the word, but it literally means also the logic. So in philosophy, Logos was, was translated more logic or logical system. So when it's saying in the beginning was the word, it is literally saying that in the beginning was the logic or the system that God had set up, the order that God had set up. So Jesus is the personification of the system that God has set up. The logic, the way that things work, that's what Jesus is. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Um. What else? What else do y'all think about this first section? I also think it's important that we understand logos as the written word too. Mm -hmm. Because. You know, if, if they had those five books written and all the commandments and all that, and this now he's saying this written word was with him from the beginning, the same written word. Mm -hmm. Good. Even, you can go further and say the spoken word because oh, the God spoke uh -huh. everything into being yes. into creation. And in that aspect, then that means from the very beginning of the spoken word yes. and creation that Jesus yes. was there with them. Wow. And so we know we know that Rhema, you know, we know there's Logos and then there's Rhema. And but it, when we look at this, it says everything was created through him. So the the Rhema came from the Logos. Yes. You can't get a Rhema. You see what I'm saying? You can't get a rhema yeah. until you understand the logos. You got to have the logic of God. You got to have the structure of God before you can get a revelation. So if, you, if you're getting revelations and you don't know the word of God and know the entire it ain't from God. God. <laughs> it ain't from God. You, you're going to be sitting out there uh, talking about, you're going to be sitting out here sending messages on Facebook talking about um, how God gonna, gonna gonna send Donald Trump to destroy New York City? Yeah. So, but you gotta know, you gotta get the word together. Amen. That's ooh, Amen. this. See, I want to say it's good. It's good. Like it's it's good. That's why I like this book. Um. And then it puts out here, God created everything through Him. So then it's saying here that everything was created was by the Son. So this. This really messes up people because yeah. 
you know, we go out here and they have all these other ideas of God and stuff like that. But what it's saying here is that not only did God create everything, but God specifically in Jesus created everything. And then it go crazy. He said, and nothing was it, it was created. <laughs> Can we back up? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, no, no, I have a question. Why is that, something about that is jumping in my spirit, but I don't know what it is. Do you know what I mean? If everything was created through Jesus, something about that is so profound, but I can't figure out what it is. But I know it's profound. You know, it's like I need a revelation. I need you know, something to just dump in me right now. It's like, oh, you know, but I can feel it. It's there. I don't know what it is, though. Can anybody think it? I mean, it's, we're well, saying the words, but there's some, some a lot of meaning behind that. Something very powerful yeah. behind that. One, one thing I think that's Jesus great through, through Jesus. One of the things I think is that that There's Jesus came and and came to relate to us. Um, and one of the things I think that's so interesting is that we we say that we get saved by Jesus, and it's like no, we're we're saying that we can have a relationship with the Creator. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Amen. Let me keep on jumping. And are we also saying that because everything was created through Jesus, the human, aren't things created through us? The, this plan, this understanding, this system is created through us in Christ we Jesus. The, it, it does say that we are the hands and feet of God. Yeah. And and I, I think that's good. That's going to go in latter rain. <laughs> because because it's so much like I don't think we realize I don't think we realize how much power we do have exactly and that's why um like like Pastor Terry was talking about like the biggest thing the biggest thing that we have been messed up uh theologically is we have been taught we have been given low self esteem. Like, oh, this is going to be a ladder rain too. But one of the big things <laughs> is that for us, like the big, the big issue of God is that if you look at Romans 1, where it says that uh, the, the clobber passage, the anti-gay passage, it, it perceived anti-gay passage, what it says is it says that God gave them over to a reprobate mind to their sin. And so the big issue is, is that people have messed up their perception of themselves because they've got a bad perception of God. So their idea is, is that you, <coughs> God throws you away and you're, 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 you're bad and God just throws you away. And so people have taken that, not just for the LGBT community, but for everything, God throws you away. But this is what it's saying here. It's saying something completely different. Yeah. It's saying that Jesus came, the word came, and became flesh for you. Yeah. So then you go down to verse, it said the word came and, and, be, and, and became human. Became human. And verse 14, and made his home in, uh, among us. And then one of the things, and so um, one of the things I think that I, I think that um, the New Century Virgin said something a little different. The New Living Translation said this. It says in verse 18, no one's seen God, but the unique one. Um, or it says the monogenesis is the uh, um, the monogenesis. So the, that, the one, pre, that, that you see how that, you know, uh, the one, one, one Genesis, the one literally where we get the word genes. So the one, <laughs> the one, uh, right. who God, who, who is himself God. Woo! So it just mm. puts it right out there because a lot of people, you know, get confused about the, you know, Jesus and God. It puts it right out there. It said, no, the one who knows the father is a unique one who is himself God. And it says, who is near the father's heart. 
So all of this is saying we can just I mean you can you can stay here for days, but yeah. it's saying that the one who created everything, who set up everything, came to live with us, to live among us. And it says not just to live among us, but it says to make his home with us. Oh Jesus. He became human, so he became like us. And then it says that he came among us. So when we go out here and talk about God trying to destroy us, God said that he was going to make our home among us. And then if we go later, we go to John 14, it says then we get the Holy Spirit and then he lives in us. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how people, yeah. how we got it messed up, but we got it messed up. Woo, we got it real messed up. We all here walking around, uh, wretched, oh, wretched one that I am. But that's not what this is saying. Amen. It says here that they were children of God. Amen. And he wants us to, and then he made it real clear because I just think about like when you read the Bible, because we're reading it, from our perspective, we 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 forget that month that people probably thought, you know, talking about like this was written in Ephesus, so they had the Roman and Greek gods. So it says here we were born of God, uh, but not by passion or the human plan, but birth that comes from God. So in other words, it was telling people that we were. It wasn't like you know how the Roman gods like Zeus and all that would have sex and have demigods. Uh -huh. It's saying that that didn't happen. We were we were born of the right. spirit. Which is interesting because we are a new creation. We, th there's never been anything like us. Mm. Those of us who are born, there's nothing like us. You know? I mean, think about it. We've been born again and still alive mm -hmm. and didn't go through our mother's womb again. We're born again. That's a whole new Creation, there's nothing like that that exists. I mean, you know, maybe another planet, but you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, amazing that we don't understand how different we are. Yeah. One of the things that I wanted to put out here that it has on here as well, it literally says that the word here, and and, I, and Pastor Tori pointed this out doing latter uh, morning glory. Um, that <laughs> that um that these were people who were living in Old Testament. So these were people who were still basically Old Testament believers, and it was being broken down to them. And so it says here in verse 14, it says he became human and made his home among us. It says literally, he in the original language, he set up his tent or set up his tabernacle. So what it's saying is it was speaking to these people, again, these Jewish believers at that time, uh, and saying that, okay, so first you had the tabernacle, and then you had the temple. And so what happened was that had all been destroyed. By this time, it all had been destroyed. And so then what John came and said is just as y'all were out in the desert, Jesus was it Jesus came to be a tabernacle to walk among us, to live among us? And I'm so right we lost, we lost the physical temple, but we have a tabernacle set up in between, uh, among us. Oh, Jesus Almighty! <laughs> Anybody else got the thing for this section here? Oh, but, uh, <clears throat> yes, it's, it's, it's a problem. Uh, <clears throat> before we leave off this, because like you said, we could, we could probably stay on this a week, but <clears throat> I, I, I have to read it out of the passion. Amen, and amen. It, and I'll probably just do probably the first five verses. Mm. Oh, amen. Okay. It says, in the very beginning, the living expression was already there. Mm -hmm. Was already there. Mm -hmm. And the living expression was with God. Yet, 
fully God. Mm. They were together face to face in the very beginning. And, and though his create and through his creative inspiration, this living expression made all things. Mm. For nothing, for nothing has existence apart from him. Nothing has existed apart from Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. For uh, life came into being because of him. For his life is light for all humanity. The light of Jesus, the light of Christ, the light of the Messiah is the light for all humanity. And this living expression is the light that bursts through gloom. <laughs> the mm. light that darkness could not diminish. <laughs> Glory to God. So when God said, light be, <laughs> Jesus burst forth <laughs> through the gloom <laughs> and darkness can never, can never extinguish it again. <laughs> can never block it out from the earth again, can never take it out of us. The light of Christ is in us, is, is, is in us, for us, <laughs> through us, as us. And it can never be distinguished in us. Mm. We have to remember that the light of Christ is in us, that we have the most powerful power in the universe in us. The light of Christ. Amen. All right. I got a quick update. Um, so it on Bible Gateway, it doesn't have the passion version. But if you're using the Bible app, which is called the Bible app, the passion, uh, the passion translation is on that app. So if you're looking okay. on your on your uh phone or you're looking through um or if you're using your tablet, it'll be on that. It'll be in that app. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. So did you uh you can go ahead and keep going uh to uh the ministry of John the Baptizer? Okay, uh I'm going I'm gonna go back to the new century version. Okay. I just wanted to. That just was so good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me go back to the message. You know, it's just your word for something just keeps sparking. It just, you know, you can feel that something's going to kind of erupt from that. Mm -hmm. You're thinking in your senses and your spirit is just here. Yeah. yeah, it's like that heaven thing. Nineteen Where am I? Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, okay, 19, all right. <clears throat> John tells people about Jesus. Verse 19. Here is the truth John told when the leaders of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, who are you? John spoke freely and did not refuse to answer. He said, I am not the Christ. But actually, he probably he said, "I'm not the Messiah." He was Hebrew. He didn't know Christ came from Greek, yeah. so uh, <clears throat> he said, "I'm not the Messiah." So they asked him, "Then who are you? Are you Elijah?" He answered, "No, I am not." Are you the prophet? They asked. He answered, "No." Then they said, "Who are you? Give us an answer to tell those who sent us." What do you what do you say about yourself? John told them in the words of the prophet Isaiah, I am a I am the voice of one calling out in the desert. Make the road straight for the Lord. Isaiah 43. Some Pharisees who had been sent asked John, if you are not the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, why do you baptize people? John answered, I baptize with water, but there is one here with you that you don't know about. He is the one 
who comes after me, and I am not good enough to untie the strings of his sandals. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan River, where John was baptizing people. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him. John said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I was talking about when I said, a man will come after me, but he is greater than I am because he was living before me. Even I did not know who he was, although I came baptizing with water so that the people of Israel would know who he is. Then John said, I saw the spirit come down from heaven in the form of a dove and rest on him. Until then, I did not know who the Messiah was. But the God who sent me to baptize with the water told me, you will see the spirit come down and rest on a man. This is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen this happen, and I tell you the truth. This man is the son of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. One of the things I think is interesting, if you read through different versions, some versions say, I am not the Messiah, and other versions say, it's not the Christ. Yeah, it just depends on, you know, where they can't, where they, <clears throat> whether they keep it more realistic of what they would say, or whether they use the Greek translation to do the, um, to do the translation of the words, you know, you know, because John would more than likely have said the Messiah than and not the Christ because they didn't even know the word, really. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's interesting because John the Baptist would have said Messiah. Yes. But at this point, John John the Apostle would have talked to these people um, and would have said Jesus the, uh, Jesus the Christ because these were these were Gentiles and the idea he was talking about was basically there was these Jewish people who were losing their identity, basically. And 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 I also think it's interesting how when John did this, John came in and um John went right in. He didn't go, he, he went right in <laughs> at these people. He didn't he talk about what Jesus was born this time and <laughs> It, it's so different because it's it's because the people who were talking to him, the Pharisees and the Levites, and the, they they all knew that. Yeah, they knew the story. They all knew that. They they were they were uh yeah, but they were what they call them um they were theologians. They, they were, were yeah they, legal. They studied the the Torah. They studied the books of Moses. They, they were the teachers the of it. They were the teachers of it. They knew that. He didn't have to tell them all that. They knew it. Mm -hmm. And he knew they knew it. <laughs> so I just cut to the chase. Just get right to the That's point. not what he said. Just oh, <laughs> get right into it. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I ain't the bush. Yeah, no, y'all came here and asked me a question. I'm giving you an answer. <laughs> and also, also, I think too that prophetically, um, um prophetically. We saw in Matthew that they spoke prophetically, but then um, we also saw um, this basically as a prophecy as well. We saw, um, you know, the the the, the forerunner who was uh, John the Baptist. So we see this as prophetic as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it says, I am the the one out in the desert calling. I'm Elijah. So it, it's still he still made it important talking about how the prophecy was. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Um, did you want to keep reading or did you want me to take over? Oh well, no, I can keep reading. You want okay. me to keep going? Yeah, keep going. Okay. Amen. Woo, yeah. Jesus. Where did I start? 24. I started to 24. Yeah, uh, 29. I'm 29. Yeah, I know you said 20. Okay. Jesus, the Lamb uh, of God. My glasses, okay. my glasses look like a four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, verse 29. The next day, John saw... Hold on, I'm so sorry. Was it? I don't think it was in 19 or 29. 
Oh, no, 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 you're right. It is 29. It is 29. I'm yeah, sorry. It's not 23. It's 29. Uh, let's see. I don't know what it's it is. After that, the next day, no, it's after that. Yeah, after that. yeah I went down, down to, yeah, it's 35. Okay, it's okay. 35, 35. 35. This is the son of God was the last thing I said. Yeah, I tell you okay. the truth. This man is the son of God. So 30 verse, uh, chapter one, verse 35. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next day, John was there again with two of his followers. When he saw Jesus walking by, he said, look, the lamb of God. The two followers heard John say this. So they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following him, he asked, what are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Rabbi means teacher. He answered, come and see. So the two men went with Jesus and saw where he was staying and stayed there with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two men who followed Jesus after they heard John speak about him was Andrew Simon Peter's brother. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and say to him, we have found the Messiah, Jesus. Uh, we have found the Messiah. Then Andrew took Simon to Jesus. Okay, before we go any further, I want to, I want to say something about um, this, this little part right here. Where it says, they said, Rabbi, where are you staying? And Jesus said, come and see. So the two men went with Jesus and saw where he was staying and stayed there with him that day. And that was about four o'clock in the afternoon. Now, I, I can't remember right off the top of my head where, the, where there was somebody that came and, and asked Jesus about where he was staying or something like that. And he said, foxes have holes and birds have nests mm -hmm. and the son of man has nowhere to live. Mm -hmm. And they have made a whole, a whole mm -hmm. denomination of group and teaching about that Jesus didn't have a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus don't yeah. have a house. Jesus didn't have a home. He didn't have no money. You know, they done made a whole religion out of that. You know, but Jesus had. He said, "Come and see. Come see where I'm staying." <laughs> we know he had a house. We know he had a, a base. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know why they take things so much out of context and boggles my mind. Okay, that's all I want to say. I'm off my so far. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> And one thing I wanted to point out that I did want to point out one thing too as well. Um, that in different versions it cuts out the answer. So he says here, Rabbi, which means teacher. And then mm -hmm. in your version, it didn't say Messiah, it just said Messiah, but then in the New Living Translations, it, it also has the definition. It says yeah, uh, Messiah, which meant Christ. So again, it, it, it was showing the audience, and I think this is interesting because but actually, but actually, Messiah doesn't mean Christ. Messiah means anointed one. It yeah. doesn't mean Christ. Christ is the Greek translation of Messiah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which but means the, the, but it was interesting. One. Yeah, <laughs> and so that, but you made a perfect point that this was where, the, again, the idea was that somebody had put that they thought that John was written in 50 uh, AD. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, these were people who were Jewish people who literally didn't know anything about Judaism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had lived among Greeks. They were Greeks and people who knew among Greeks who had to have all of this stuff translated to them. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting, <laughs> yes. It, uh, just real quick, I went through this out. It's also interesting how fast, when they were not in the word of God, how fast they forgot about the stuff. <laughs> yeah. It was basically one generation, and they had already forgot about everything. Yeah. 20 years. But, that's the prize this year. But it wasn't, you know, <laughs> that was just the regular group going day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't remember what was pushed last Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was just the regular people. But the Pharisees and the the Levites and the Sadducees and all of them, you got to remember now the people that they sent to go ask John the questions were not were not 
were not the oldest ones. The oldest ones sit them because the oldest ones, you got to remember, were they knew because they probably were alive when the star came up. Mm -hmm. The Magi came and asked about where the king is. Mm -hmm. You know, they were they were probably young. They were young priests and Levites. And they and, and so now they're the they're the chief Pharisees and the chief priests and all of that. And so now they're thinking, okay, all right, now this has been oh, about 30 years ago. About 30, remember 30 years ago when the mm -hmm. Magi came with that star? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I don't remember that. Yeah, oh, she, so bad she, 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 this she, guy she, jumped she, on she, 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 <laughs> Because <laughs> 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 we know Herod didn't kill him because you know we, we didn't we didn't see we know Herod didn't kill him because he was gone by the time Herod sent people mm -hmm. out there because the bad guy didn't come back you know they didn't come back the same way so it was two or three years you know maybe five years before they he sent somebody there so huh, let's go find out who he is mm -hmm. you know that's so that's so integral to thinking about how integral that was if you think about the the cross of jesus how they manipulated and twisted the law to crucify jesus mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. these guys knew what they were doing they mm -hmm. knew you know they they just played the romans you know so the romans didn't have a clue you mm -hmm. know so you can you know they didn't have a clue mm -hmm. but they knew they knew yeah, this guy was probably very significant yeah. when yeah. washed his hands. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very significant. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. just a, you yeah. know. That his wife, can you imagine that God had given his wife a dream and told him, and he sees the message to him, don't you have nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. So people want to, they want to blame the Romans, but the Romans were not, they didn't have nothing to do with it. It mm -hmm. was the Pharisees. And the the the, the chief priests and all of them, it, the Romans were just playing players in the game that they were playing. They have they, they didn't really have what are you bringing to bed? They <laughs> sure as you take care of it. Oh, uh, it's a holiday. We can't we can't do that. But this needs fixed right now. Oh my goodness! It's, oh my. It's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. It is when you I I I sit here really looking at this from. Start to finish from the well, start to finish, and as if it ever is. Yeah, um, but start from the you know, talking about the star and the birth coming up, and yeah. thinking about and thinking it from that perspective that they knew exactly what they were doing, they knew who it was, they knew what the purpose behind it was. And yeah, Woo, that's some kind of good, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh... Let me, um, no, let's just stop right here. And, yeah, let's uh, stop right there. Um, uh, start at 42, uh, start at 42 next time. Okay, 42. we're gonna have fun in John. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody got any other thoughts on their heart before we wrap up? Oh, I'm sorry, my back. <laughs> he's, definitely <the> most, <laughs> he's definitely the most poetical author in scripture outside of the proverbs mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. outside of the proverbs i think he is the most poetical you can do a rap song in word word in the word and god is in the word and we and remember the word. remember we're looking at the gospel of john we're talking about the poetic think about um uh oh think about uh when we get to revelation he get real <laughs> He get real poetic then, talking about the beast and the eyes and the heads and, and the things flying out. <laughs> I took I took took a lot of courses on on uh, Revelation, and then it is it's loaded with symbolism. And my my firm belief to this day is that it, that after studying it and then looking at it in depth, is that John was writing about the conditions of that time that were going on politically. Yeah, right. Because yeah, that's what why, when he was exiled is when he was writing that, and I think he was writing in code to let them know this is what's going on here, this is what's going on here, and Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Praise the Lord, Lord. I thank you for the day. I thank you that we have continued 
to be able to have this word. Um, I pray that you will speak through our hearts to help us to fall in love with you and fall in love with you as the word of God. And I pray that we will just have a joyous time in this. I thank you for us bringing us together all as a family. And I thank you for all that you've done. In Christ's name, I pray. Help us to get home safely and help us to be in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. And tell, tell, tell Sister Cappy that we miss her. Okay, tell Willoughby say hey. All right. Y'all know where Sister Cappy is. She ain't out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Willie. Yeah, <laughs> Willie say he's going to call you later. Say <laughs> what? <laughs> Willie say he'll call y'all later. <laughs> okay. All Amen. Right. Well, I'll let y'all know when I come back down. I got to finally get settled in. <laughs> okay. Oh, Mercy, I've, I've been everywhere. All right, love y'all. I will see y'all soon. I'll see you okay. next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>